So, ca să încep direct în engleză, dar intru o să-l fac în română. Încă o seară de joi, încă o degustare online. Sperăm noi și asta să fie fabuloasă și, de fapt, nu doar că sperăm, fiindcă degustarea din seara asta este cu Chuck Kramer, cel care se ocupă pentru Terlato Wines, pentru faimosul producător american Terlato Wines, de Europa din punct de vedere al văzărilor și al marketingului. Este un tip fabulos de mișto și foarte spumant, așa. Vine foarte des în România, mă rog, venea, acum să sperăm că o să vină odată ce scăpăm și de această, de această pandemie. Vine la târguri, își prezintă vinurile cu ardoare și cu un patos de nu ai cum să nu le deguști și odată ce le-ai degustat, nu ai cum să nu-ți placă. Din ceea ce degustăm în seara asta, eu sunt fan declarat Green Pistols. De când, de când mi l-a prezentat Chuck, cred că acum 2 ani, l-am descoperit. Uh, aproape de câte ori ies într-un loc mișto și vreau să dau un vin mișto, uh, eu fiind un entuziast al roșilor, uh, este una dintre opțiunile de bază. Și aseară am fost, chiar am fost la vino, am vrut la o degustare de italienești uh, și după aia am vrut uh, Dwelling Pistols, dar din păcate nu l aveau la pahar. Și cum după o degustare de, de 5 vinuri nu prea mai eram în stare să mai iau încă o sticlă. Uh, Salivez de, de aseară la, la acest Dwelling Pistols pe care Marina mi l-a pus în pahar, mă așteaptă aici, sunt aliniate frumos toate patru Și fără, fără mult alt tam-tam, o să-i las, ca de obicei, introduc întâi și apoi îi las pe, pe Marina și pe Chuck să discute despre tot ce înseamnă zonele fabuloase din, din America, Sonoma, Mendocino O să vorbească despre vinuri, o să vedem și aici e o surpriză, o să vedem noul federalist, deocamdată nu-l avem în România, dar măcar o să ni-l arate ceac. Și fără, fără mult alt tam-tam, îi adaug pe cei doi și de asemenea, we switch to English. So, here is our Marina and here is our duck. So guys, now uh, you, you, have, uh, you have approximately 45 minutes, let's say. To, to present the wines, to talk about uh, about uh, the beautiful region where uh, where it's made, about uh, the market and uh, wherever the the topics go. Yeah. So Marina and Chuck. So hello Chuck and welcome to Romania. Even if it's online only, <laughs> I know you're looking forward to come to visit us. <laughs> But definitely. Uh, Well, these are the, the times, but you know, uh, because of COVID, we are doing this online tasting and look on a casual Thursday night, we are having a glass of uh, American wines with you through internet. So this is quite amazing, I say. COVID was good at something, you know, <laughs> connecting us. Yes, and I, make... I agree. Well, thank you, Marina, very much for having me on your uh, on your program. I'm really looking forward to the tasting this evening. We are also, and we are looking forward to discuss about uh, the Rutherford Hill brand, Federalist, and all the wines and all the good stuff in in Napa. But first, let's let's uh, talk a, a bit about uh, California as a region, as a wine region, because you know, uh, in Romania, American wines are not so popular. We uh, like Romanian and Italian wine, wines more. And uh, I, I think and I know that uh, Zinfandel uh, from, from Federalist was a hit. And I hope you are selling a lot of bottles here. And I hope uh, George will, <laughs> will uh, make his supplies <laughs> soon, no? I agree. I hope George sells a lot of wine, yes. From, from your brands. Um, tell us a bit about California as a wine region. Why is so amazing? Because I was writing the articles for Desprevin and, uh, okay, I studied during my WCT studies in London and everything, but when you go so deep, uh, writing a lot of, about a region, you just f fell in love with it. And I'm, I'm looking forward to come to, to go to California to, to, to visit some wineries there. Which is your favorite? What part of California? Why can you share with us? Well, my my favorite part of California is uh, Southern California. So I grew up in I grew up in Los Angeles, um, and Southern California just has a lot to offer. I mean, you've got beautiful coastline, beautiful beaches. 
Um, you know, depending where you live, you can be at the beach anywhere from 15 minutes to 45 minutes because of the freeways to take you all over the place. You can go skiing, you know, with an hour and a half, you can be up in the mountains up, up in, you know, for example, uh, skiing. Um, and it's just, you know, it's the weather. It's just fabulous. I mean, you know, Northern California, you've got Napa and you've got all the big wine regions and you've got San Francisco. Uh, but for me, uh, it's, it's Southern California. It's where I grew up and the weather's just fantastic. And I think that's, you know, California, you know, Calif California is the number one um, wine producing state in the United States of America. So it accounts for 85% of total production and it, um, and it just comes down to the weather. I mean, the weather is just ideal. You have the Pacific Ocean there, which helps the grapes to grow and retain their freshness. Um, and in other parts of the country, in the south, on the east coast, it's too humid. In, um, along the Mexican border, it's too hot. Up north, the Midwest, it's too cold. So literally, um, you know, when the immigrants came to California in the early 1800s, that they, they, they planted vines from, from, from uh, their home regions, whether it's Italy, um, Germany, Norway, et cetera, because ideal um, California just offers the best weather in the United States. And it's, it just, it's the weather. And that's why, um, that's why the, that's why we, that's where we're able to produce so much really good wine. So you're saying that uh, it's like um, uh, heaven for grape uh, varieties, California, no? <laughs> exactly. It's 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 heaven for it's heaven for grape varieties. But I will say, um, I will say that um, we grow grapes in all 50 states. So Alaska, Texas, Arizona, um, we grow um, grapes are grown in every state. Uh, but California is the number one producer. The first grape, the first grape uh, uh, vines were planted actually in the state of Ohio um, in the 1800s. Uh, but after California, California is number one. Like I said, we produce 85% of all the wine. After that, it's Washington, it's Oregon, comes in number three. And then it's a toss up between four and five. It's either Virginia or the Finger Lakes districts in upstate New York. But uh, California is the major player, and that's what gets exported across the world. Yeah, and now it's a, I, I think it's a rush with the Pinot Noirs from Oregon. You, mm. you, you just have to taste them. They are amazing. But uh, normally, California being so big, you can find, the, and Napa Valley having this big reputation, you know, you, you, you have the chance to taste more uh, these kind of wines. But um, I was laughing when I was writing the articles because being uh, California being 85% uh, 80, uh, of the total grape production is actually the fourth largest region in, in the world of production of grapes, you know? And I was like, okay, not United States, but California yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah, so exactly. Is amazing. It is amazing. So uh, regarding Terlato wines, how many hectares do you guys have in all your wineries? Do you have a number or do you know something okay. like this? Um, in terms of, well, okay, can you repeat that question? How many, how hectares many wineries? Of, uh, no, hectares of vines. How many vines do you have? Oh, there's about, the, the Terlato family owns about 500. Oh, no, like, I take that back. The Terlato family probably owns about 400 um, hectares. So they're all associated with um, uh, Sanford in Santa Barbara, uh, Rutherford, Rutherford Hill in Napa, and Chimney Rock in Napa. So, for example, at Chimney Rock, there are about 110 acres planted to Cabernet Sauvignon, and 90% of that is, is Cabernet Sauvignon. So if you look at Stag's Leap District, where Chimney Rock is in Napa, um, and Chimney Rock's just right down the road from Rutherford Hill, we're going to taste the Chardonnay. Um, Stag's Leap District, 90% of all the grapes planted are Cabernet Sauvignon. So this is real. Chimney Rock is real Cabernet Sauvignon territory. I was, we are not tasting this wine, but I was very impressed of the Chimney Rock, the Elevage Blanc. I know you maybe have it, but uh, we picked the Rutherford Hill Chardonnay because we had many Chardonnays in our uh, our packages. You know, in Desprevin, we are making these three bottle uh, boxes and send to people uh, with a tasting sheet so they okay. can like 
you know, enjoy having fun, tasting some wines and actually understand uh, things about the winery or about the region or about the concept. And mm -hmm. we had a lot of Chardonnays. And for me, because you said uh, we were we we're going to taste the, the Rutherford Hill uh, Chardonnay, I, I want to ask you a question regarding the differences between the Rutherford Hill Chardonnay and the um, Federalist Chardonnay, because Federalist, I think, was one of our best cells in terms of Chardonnay. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, the, the, the big difference is um, from a commercial standpoint, it's price. Okay. So um, I would say in, you know, here in, here in the UK or in the EU, you're probably looking around at the equivalent of 20 euros uh, for a bottle of Federalist uh, Chardonnay. Um, and then You know, here in the UK, it's 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 say 30 pounds versus 20 pounds. So it's one, it's more expensive. Uh, Rutherford Hill, it, Hill Chardonnay is more expensive. Two, completely different wine regions. Rutherford Hill Chardonnay were in Napa. Napa is the most prestigious wine producing region in the United States. Um, and Napa, we could talk about this in a little bit. Napa, I will just show the, yeah, the yeah. label of the. Um, Napa only no Napa, even though it's the most famous, only produces four percent of all the wine um, in in California. So the most prestigious, the most famous, but it's 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 a tiny tiny producer. Um, but going back to the comparison, so Rutherford Hill is more expensive than the Federalist Chardonnay. Two completely different regions. Um, Rutherford Hill comes from Napa. Um, And the Federalist Chardonnay comes from Mendocino County, and Mendocino is probably the the it's just north of Sonoma. Um, it's well north of San Francisco, even though Sonoma borders Napa. Mendocino is probably the furthest north in California, where you're really growing uh, uh, um, uh, vines. You're growing, uh, you know, you have vineyards, um, and it's Mendocino's counties close to the ocean where Napa's. Uh, inland. So I would say stylistically, while they're both, while they're both, um, while they're both creamy wines, they offer, they offer, uh, they offer texture. Um, I would say that, I mean, they're both extremely good Chardonnays. Uh, the Rutherford Hills probably going to um, give you a bit more uh, complexity um, just due to the warmer weather in, uh, in Napa. So those are the major uh, differences, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. So I, I was very curious. Let's taste. Do you have the bottle open? Oh, oh yeah, of course I do. Cheers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a special Chardonnay glass from our friends from Riedel. Uh, and uh, I just enjoy having a nice Chardonnay, you know, like in, in the US with a lot of body, with creaminess and everything in this kind of uh, glass because, you know, you, you lose the, um, uh, you don't have so much flavor concentration when you use this kind of glasses. No, I What agree. You yeah, your glass, <laughs> your glass is bigger than my glass. Look at that; it's yeah. wider. But you have a proper Chardonnay glass. But yeah, I mean, look at. Um, it also, you know, hold up the label again, Marina, before we taste. So you have this, you have this beautiful winery, and on the front label there, that and that's the entrance to the caves. That's the entrance to the caves behind the winery, and the caves go over. They go more than a mile deep, and we store about eight thousand barrels in there. Um, and we use these caves as well for tours when you visit the winery um, to entertain. I've been there for dinners and for lunches, and it's and it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's just a beautiful property. Marisa Taylor's the winemaker there, and yeah, I mean to taste this, I would encourage everybody who's listening um, to uh, to try this to try this wine because I think for the money. Um, This is really good. This is really good value, Napa Chardonnay, and I'll and I'll tell you why in a second. So I would say the difference when you look at the Ruther, Rutherford Hill versus the Chardonnay, well, they're both creamy and they both have good mouthfeel and texture to it. The Rutherford Hill Chardonnay is just more elegant than the. Um, yeah or sophisticated than the Federalist Chardonnay, you get some really nice uh, toasty um, uh, vanilla notes 
on the note on the nose here. You get vanilla on the Federalist, but you get the really nice toasty vanilla notes on the finish. Um, and it's a quite expressive wine. You get a lot of tropical fruit flavors here, like you know, peaches, stone fruit, stuff like that. It's um, just a board, yeah. You have also some almonds, some uh, like roasted almonds, and mm -hmm. I, I think it's amazing. It's very, it opens up very nice in this glass. So it's, it's very good. It's very good. And it's got a great long finish. So the minute you you're done drinking it, you can just kind of feel it still going on and on and on. Um, what's, what's, what's the retail value for um, in Romania for this wine, for your website? Uh, we have a, a special box uh, with mm -hmm. only Napa Valley wines, which uh, two of them are from Rutherford Hill, the Chardonnay and the, uh, the Merlot. Mm -hmm. uh, and the price is, I will tell you in a minute, uh, around um, uh, 100 euros, I think, for three bottles of wine. Uh, the third is a very nice Cabernet Sauvignon from... Um, uh, Knights Valley region, so mm -hmm. less than 100 euros, let's say 90 something euros. Okay. Um, okay. So then, so then this would be about maybe 30, 30 euros, something like that. Something like that. Okay. So yeah. this is yeah, why I, it's, what? I think, okay, it's not very expensive for Romanian market. Uh, it's not very, very cheap, sorry, for Romanian market, no. but it's, it offers you a lot of pleasure, you know. It's like very complex kind of uh, uh, Chardonnay. If you want um, uh, white wine, not just to to enjoy in a summer night or things like this, or you are in a restaurant and you want to t uh, to experiment uh, wine and food pairing and things like this, I think the Rutherford Chardonnay is the kind of wine. It has, I don't know, complexity, it has body, it has structure, it has flavors. It builds up the flavors from stone fruits, as you say, to uh, toast, to almonds, roasted almonds, to some marzipan, maybe hints there. I, I think it's amazing i'm not very much into chardonnays i enjoy them i really like to taste them but when i drink a, a white wine i always prefer the more you know fresh kind of sauvignon blanc or mm -hmm. you know, things like this yeah yeah this, no this one it's very complex this, it's, yeah. it's not for drinking during you know just pop up a bottle put a glass and go to the balcony and sit and relax. It's, sure it, it is. To, sure it no, is. No, you have to yes. dress up and to drink it. No, you don't. You don't. You. It's. It's not just about Pinot Grigio and Sauvignon Blanc. I think you could have this one by no, the glass. No. But this. What I like about this wine, Marina, and you bring up a good point, is I love this wine's versatility. So you know, chicken, seafood, um, you know, fish. But I've had this wine. I've had this wine. If you're not, if you're out, like say having a steak or a burger or whatever, um, there's enough body here to hold up to a fatty steak or a cheeseburger. So this this wine's quite com this wine's quite quite complex, quite and quite versatile. So you know everybody who's listening and say you're not a red wine fan for whatever reason, you can have this wine with the steak, with the nice fatty you know steak that's got a bit of fat on it, and it's and it's perfect. And the other point I want to make is um, for the Chardonnay, again, I know for the Romanian market, it's expensive wine, but the average price of a Chardonnay coming out of Napa right now, uh, the average bottle price, retail price of a Chardonnay in Napa at the moment is about 55, 60 euros. Okay. And this is half that price. So I don't want to sound like we're on the, the QVC channel or something like that. But it's a, it's 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 good value for money for now. But definitely, yeah. I I'm very happy that you said that we can pair like white wine with steak or burgers because in Romania we have this uh, uh, thought that we can only pair white wines with fish and maybe chicken and stuff like this. But I I really enjoy pairing different kind of food with different different kind of wine. I even enjoy pairing like um, maybe a more um, uh, a less uh, but. Uh, Soft, softer body kind of reds with uh, with uh, fish. 
Mm-hmm. And I I loved when I said you said burger and uh, chardonnay because I think they make a very good pairing. Very yeah, good. I mean, look, yeah, I think I think it's a total myth that you can't have white wine with uh, with with you know with fish or red or sorry white wine with red meat or red wine with fish. I mean, if you have a really lovely uh, Pinot Noir, chill it down and you can have it night nice, with a nice heavy fish like a monkfish or something like that. Yeah. So. There's crossover. There's crossover here, and especially with this wine. This is, and this is, um, this is um, where Federalist Chardonnay. The other difference with Federalist Chardonnay, because we, because we, we produce a lot of it. We purchase the fruit for the Federalist uh, wines. Um, uh, for the Rutherford Hill Chardonnay, seventy okay. percent or so is 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 estate fruit coming from from our coming from our property in Rutherford. And then also, then we're buying some from uh, Car- from Carneros. You know, we only produce the biggest within Rutherford Hill. We produce the most of Merlot, um, and it, you know, overall the winery is not that big. But we uh, Rutherford Hill, seventy percent of the production is dedicated to Merlot. Uh, for this vintage, two thousand and fifteen, we only produced like thirty six hundred cases of the Chardonnay. That was it. So you know, like I said, really good value and. Um, we, like uh, I'm we, saying, uh, paying less than 100 euros for three bottle of Napa Valley great deal. Great wines, it's a very good deal. Very good deal. Very good deal. Yeah. Yes. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I made the prices and I, I think uh, we are okay with uh, in terms of this. And But we, uh, what we are doing in Desplevin is trying to make people understand the differences between the regions of the... Of the uh, where the grapes are growing and the mentalities of wine making of uh, small quantities of wine and things like this we uh, are making it with the Romanian uh, producers and now we came to America to discover different kind of uh, wines mm-hmm. I, I it's just amazing what happens and uh, I'm very happy with uh, with this week what happened in Desprevin in terms of or well, the information that we gave uh, gave to the people and uh, um, the fact that you are here uh, tasting with us and I want to thank you and I want to encourage all the people uh, watching us to ask us questions because I'm sure they have a lot of questions uh, that uh, they want to ask uh, regarding American wines. So guys, we are here, we can discuss with you also even if we we have the wines in our front and maybe you don't but it's enough time until you know monday morning to to purchase them and to uh, taste them at home so what i will propose you is to taste the next one which is the red blend honest red blend from federalist um one of our fra- favorites from federalist as alex was telling uh, at the beginning of our uh, tasting is the zinfandel and then he just uh, fell in love for the dwelling pistols i'm very uh looking for i'm looking forward to taste the red blend because um for me uh, federalist was mainly only about zinfandel <laughs> so mm-hmm. i'm very curious about this wine i'll pour a bit so we have here a blend of uh, Merlot, Zinfandel, and Cabernet Sauvignon, right? Mm-hmm. From all the three regions that we have listed this week uh, on Desprevin, which are Mendocino County, Napa County, and Sonoma County, right? That's correct. Yes. Yeah, that's that's correct. So, um, it, you want to? Okay, what I can do is I can I can hold up. Where is the? Li- I can hold up the label here. Yeah. So here, um, and then we'll we'll bring up the Zin later. But here, so the Federalist, um, you have a, you have Abraham Lincoln, and we call this the honest we we call this the honest uh, red blend because Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president, was uh, was his nickname was Honest Abe. Okay. Um, and what we've done is what the Federalist brand is. Um, the Trelato family and the marketing team took images off the currency. Of you of of the U.S. currency of the different of the different bills, there you know you travel all the world. Uh, the the dollar is the most uh, you know widely traded currency um, in in the world. So these are recognizable figures. Okay, so we've just taken images off the currency. We put on the label here, and then we have um, we have uh, Abraham Lincoln on the honest red uh, blend, and 
what we're doing here is even though Abraham Lincoln wasn't a founding father, the Federalist pays tribute to the uh, to the founding fathers, U.S. presidents of the United States of America that are our, that are on our U.S. currency. Okay, um, and so we're paying tribute to our founding fathers. And visually, you have this packaging here that's 100% America. It's like Levi jeans. It's like Ford Mustang. It's like Coca Cola. This brand is 100% American. There's nothing else. There's nothing else in there. Now the fruits from California. Okay. But we wanted to create an image that is easily recognizable, identifiable, and engage with storytelling. So when you see this on a wine list, when you see this in a retail shop, you're drawn, you're drawn to it. You're saying, what's this? Because you recognize the labels and it tells a story. It tells a story of a piece of, you know, of Americana, the beginning, you know, the, the foundations, the beginning that were, you know, the founding fathers laid the foundations uh, for uh, for the United States of America. And then um, Brian Parker is the winemaker here. And these are wines. These are wines to be enjoyed now. You open it, you drink it. And these wines that we're tasting today, they're all enjoyable by the glass. Great with food, 100%. Think barbecue, think steaks, think burgers, think think ribs, um, sausage and mash. Um, you know, Romania is a big meat eating country, yeah. so these red wines are fantastic for your um, for Sarmale. your cuisine. Exactly, and this is this. You know, red blends are hot in the United States after after Cabernet Sauvignon. Red blends are hot, and this is the fastest. This is the this is the fastest growing red blend in the United States between 12 and $20 um, retail. And when you try it, I mean, you just get some great, you know, raspberry fruit flavors, red, red berry flavors. You get some uh, nice spicy notes and then definitely a hint of chocolate. And I think at the finish there, you get some black um, licorice. This gets, this gets oak aged. It's about 25% new American oak. This gets oak aged for about 15 months in American oak. So, but it's still, you know, it's not a big wine. It's not an over-the-top heavy red. It's still, there's some nice acidity to there. There's some nice freshness. And it's just, you know, it's just very easy to drink. It's very pleasurable. Yeah, I agree. I, I have nothing more to add. <laughs> I, I just enjoy the, um, I like very much the labels because they have a lot of power you know okay they drown you to 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 the wine they they are you ask yourself what's in the bottle but it's like when you are thinking that are the uh, presented presidents of uh, america you just feel all the you know all all the good and bad periods america has been through and it's just you you treasure more the wine inside because it's mm -hmm. like the wine the wine has the vine has good periods, bad periods, can uh, give us uh, good grapes, great wines, but sometimes you don't have it, have them. So what to do? And yeah, no. I, Go on. I think, I think the wine is just, you know, I was uh, smelling a hint of uh, uh, bell pepper at the end, uh, mm -hmm. probably from the Cabernet Sauvignon. I just enjoy American Cabernet Sauvignons because they are very... Uh, true to the fruits, you know, very uh, true to the style of Cabernet. You you don't find the wine that is made from Cabernet that you don't know that it's Cabernet. You know, it's it's very interesting. And I was feeling this, but then, as you said, if you chill it a bit, maybe a barbecue or some sarmale <laughs> would be perfect for for this uh, this wine. Very good. Yeah, the um, if you look at if you look at the packaging, you also have here at the very top, which is on, you have the American Bald Eagle, which is on every Federalist wine. So again, visually, you have these cues that you know just say this is this is an American wine, and the Federalist is the Federalist. The Trelato, the Trelato family, the marketing team there, they're very you know they're very smart people. They're really good at promoting their product, and they've just come up with some fantastic pack packaging. And this is, you know, this is a craft wine. So if you think of like the craft, the craft spirit movement, the craft beer movement, this is this is the only craft wine um, in the market. So it's quite, uh, it's quite, it's quite unique. How many brands the Terlato wines have? Whoa. How many? <laughs> well, in, in the Terlatos, basically, they are the leader of the luxury wine market in the United States. So they, in the U.S., they manage. 
um, say 85 plus wine brands from all of California and all over the world. Um, it, within my portfolio for Europe, I manage uh, 10, um, 10 California wine brands. So nine or 10. So, you know, these are either wineries or brands that the Chilada owns or that they have the global distribution rights for. So of the 85, I get to play with, uh, you know, nine or 10 of them, but it's great because it's all about from, it's all about California and that's where I'm from. So, you know, I love talking about my home state. <laughs> I'm sure of that. I, I love talking about Romanian wines also. So Yes, well, they're very good. I, I, I feel you. Yes, but the American ones are, are sometimes sometimes even better. So we fell in love. The first time when I had uh, an American wine, for sure I had the uh, Zinfandel, you know, and I, uh -huh. I just been amazed of the body structure flavors and everything that uh, that can offer what i didn't like at that moment was a different or uh different year i think of the zinfandel was the alcohol so 15.5 alcohol in a red wine for me it's a lot here we okay. have 14.5 with mm -hmm. the zinfandel and um uh, it's a lot because I cannot enjoy more than two glasses because I will go to sleep afterwards. Okay. But, but, but the Zinfandel is like when you say America, you say Cabernet Sauvignon, Chardonnay and Zinfandel and maybe Merlot sometimes and that's it for me. Okay. Yeah. Well, look at, uh, for, well, first of all, if you look at the packaging, you have George Washington um, on, the, uh, on, the, on the front label. Uh, Abraham Lincoln's on the $5 bill. George Washington's on the $1 bill. George Washington was a U.S. general, the U.S. general, the commanding general during the American Revolutionary War. He was the first president of the United States, ser ser uh, served two terms. He had wooden teeth, um, wore a wig, but beyond that, um, this is just a great Zinfandel. This is, this is mostly Zinfandel. This vintage has some Syrah in there, some Syrah. Um, the fruit's the fruits coming from Lodi. Okay. And when you talk about Lodi as a region, um, Lodi is located about 45 minute drive south of the state capital, Sacramento. And Lodi is a workhorse. Lodi in terms of wine production, Lodi produces about 22% of all the wine coming out of California. Uh, Zinf there's a lot of Zinfandel planted in Lodi. That's because Robert Mondavi was the first to plant uh, uh, Zinfandel um, there. And this is just this is just a gorgeous um, Zinfandel. Um, you know, we call this California signature grape variety. You know, nobody else grows Zinfandel anywhere in the world. So just like you know, even though Zinfandels originated in Croatia, you could say you know Malbec originated in in Southwest France, but more people know about Malbec from Argentina and Zinfandel. We call it our own. Nobody else grows it. Nobody else does it better. Um, and what I like about Zinfandel, it's it's very quirky. Um, you get these really beautiful blueberry, um, raspberry, um, redberry fruit flavors, but also because of the high concentration of this wine, Marina, you know, refers to the the alcohol percentage. This gets a lot of hang time. This gets picked late because the grape needs to ripen, and so it raisins, and that's when the sugars concentrate. And when they dry out, you're also getting this in Zinfandel, a good Zinfandel. You're think like port almost. You're getting these dried fruit flavors like figs, raisins, port along those lines. And it's for me, for me, it's a real toss up. If I had to name my two favorite grape varieties of all time, I mean, top five, it would be Zinfandel or Syrah. Maybe I switch those around a little bit, but I love this wine. This, this Zinfandel is the number two Zinfandel sold by the glass in the United States. Okay. So it's extremely popular. I sell a lot of it here in the United Kingdom. I sell a lot of it. We sell a lot of it in, uh, in Romania. Thanks to you guys, Despravine and, and George, um, over at Alma Tim. And, uh, it's just a gorgeous barbecue wine. This gets about 12 months Oak. And when it comes to, when it comes to alcohol, um, you know what it could say 15%, but if, it, if, if the wine's in harmony, it's balanced, and there's freshness there, um, it, does, it doesn't matter. Um, it, it doesn't matter. And, you know, yeah, California, you're going to see 14, 15, sometimes 16% wines. 
but California is a warm state and you know, the grapes, uh, the grapes, the grapes, the grapes get hot, they ripen, but that's why we have the Pacific ocean right there. Cause you get the fog, you get the coastal influence there. And this is what keeps these grapes fresh, um, uh, fresh and balanced, um, uh, to offset the heat, uh, during the day. Cause Lodi does get warm. Uh, you're inland. You're not, you know, you're not on the coast, like say Sonoma, Santa Barbara, but yeah. I love this. I love this wine. It's just, you know, it's just gorgeous, gorgeous, you know, red. And there are hints of chocolate in there as well. And that's coming from the, from the, from the toasted oak. You know, the sour cherries with, in mm -hmm. chocolate, like uh, sour cherry with the chocolate coat. Uh, this is what, uh, uh, what I have in mind about this wine. And you just made me miss, miss London, you know, just going to a pub asking for a nice glass of Zinfandel, getting this and maybe have some, I don't know, some some, re some ribs or things like this, or maybe a um, barbecue with the friends with the Romanian sausages and uh, oh, yeah. Romanian uh, pork, uh, mangalitsa pork and things like this, perfect. And now because, uh, you know, September is uh, starting and the uh, weather starts to, cool, to be cooler in Romania, it's just perfect perfect this is the kind of, of wine that you just pop it pour a glass go to i don't know terrace yard uh, and s stay like that and you, you just relax chill after a working day not the chardonnay the chardonnay you have to pair it <laughs> you have no. to do something special for it at least a, a cheese plate or at least a date or something to open a bottle you know yeah but somebody you, else so, somebody else to share it with exactly yeah. yeah but this one is just you can enjoy it as it is it's perfect it's it's amazing and for me it's like as i was telling um the smell of like uh, sour cherries uh, yeah, in Romania, definitely. we are we are using a lot of sour cherries, like we are doing the uh, marmalade of sour cherries, and it's for me it's very pregnant in my head. Yep, very nice. Uh, yep, good, very good, very good, dis very good description. I mean, you know, when you hold these when you hold these bottles up, when you hold these bottles up, you have, um, you know, you have George Washington, you have Abraham Lincoln. Um, on the ca um, on the Cabernet Sauvignon, we have um, Ab uh, we have Ben Franklin, who's on the hundred dollar bill, and then we have the uh, Statue of Liberty on the Chardonnay. You have Alexander Hamilton on the on the Visionary Zinfandel. So when you line them up, it looks like the Mount Rushmore of uh, of wines. Um, but it's it's just a great story, and they're and they're you know Brian Parker does a great job making these wines. If the American doesn't do good work with uh, with marketing, who does? So. Exactly, exactly. But uh, let's make a bet. Let's make no. a bet. Sure. Let's let's bet uh, which one of the four wines that we are tasting tonight will be Alex's favorite. What do you say? Ooh. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, sh okay. So should I give you my choice right now? Yes, please. Do. All right. I'm going to say the Rutherford Hill Chardonnay. Okay. Mm, I'm going to say mm, the red blend. The honest the red, red blend. blend. But yes. see, I, I shouldn't have taken that bet because you know Alex a lot better than I do. So I probably got I, I, pro I probably got scammed on that bet, but that's fine. No problem. <laughs> yeah, I know him better, but you know, in, in terms of uh, his taste in wine, sometimes I get very, uh, I, I get confused because uh, sometimes he likes different things that I imagine that he will do. So, for instance, last week we had a tasting of uh, Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah, and Pinot Noir. I, mm -hmm. I just love the Pinot Noir. Uh, all the wines were amazing. And I bet that he will will uh, pick the Cabernet Sauvignon. You know what he picked? Actually, mm. the Pinot Noir. The so, Pinot, okay. Well, funny. you know, yeah, very funny. So this is, uh, I like to do this. <laughs> it's very interesting. Um, okay, so let's go to the last uh, last of the wines because mm -hmm. uh, we only have like uh, five minutes to finish the tasting. Uh -oh. and yeah, time's up 
very quick when you discuss about uh, about uh, wines, good wines. So okay, uh, this is the wine that when I want to make Alex's day better, I buy it because I know he will just love it and he will love the fact that I bought it to, for us to, to drink it uh, in the night. So it's uh, Federalist Dwelling Pistols. For me, it's mm. very, very nice because it's a blend of Zinfandel and Syrah. So you have all the red fruits and, and the consistency of the, um, the Zinfandel and then you have the spiciness of the Syrah. So it's very well balanced, well integrated wine. I, mm -hmm. I know you don't have it, but I'm sure you will show us uh, what you have regarding the dwelling pistol. <laughs> okay, well, let's first talk about what vintage is that, Marina, that you're drinking? Um, I will tell you in a bit, it's 2015. Okay. So that's, so this Infidel is pretty much 100, well, it's it's all Zinfandel. I think back in 15, uh, the winemaker, Brian, was putting about 2% Carignan in, Carignan in there, um, which, you know, gives it a, a darker uh, color. Yeah. Uh, Zinfandel on its own is not typically known as an age-worthy grape where, you know, Carignan is. Um, this gets about 15 months, uh, American, American oak, um, and it is a blend. It's a 50, you have two pistols on the front label, two, two dueling pistols, and it's an exactly a 50-50 blend of Zinfandel and Syrah from Dry Creek uh, Valley. And Dry Creek for me is the best place to grow Zinfandel in, uh, in California. You're in Sonoma now, you're closer to the ocean, you're just, you're just outside of the little town of Healdsburg, um, and you're in Dry Creek Valley, and you got this stretch of about nine miles worth of, of vineyards. It gets really hot, but it also gets, the, the area gets benefits uh, from, from early morning fog and the cool ocean breeze um, at night. I've walked through, I walked through several vineyards there. Um, I've, I've walked through several vineyards there and I've, and I've walked through vin uh, vines. I've seen these old bush train vines, Zinfandel vines that go back 120 years. You know, it's, it's quite, it's quite amazing. So this is just a really good wine. It's a wine that will age well, especially because of the Syrah. You know, you get the peppery notes from the Syrah again, the cherries along those, along those lines, and it's just, um, it's just a lovely wine. Now I know you're selling this um, in Romania, um, in the United States, and the United Kingdom. Well, in the United States, um, we've discontinued this wine because we've changed the label. And I could show I could show everybody one of the bottles of the new labels when you when you're when you're ready. But this wine, this 2015, is still drinking great. And it's uh, it, this is a this is a steak wine right here, without a doubt. Where the other reds you can have on its own, a glass of wine on its own. With the dueling pistols, you you want some food. Um, we want some food with this wine. Definitely, you have more tannins going on. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, a more um, deeper structure even in color you uh, the color is uh, is deeper than in the previous one so the Zinfandel is lighter in color I think um, and uh, sure it has more more flavors and more complexity than the, the Zinfandel but I really liked also the honest red blend so if you uh, ask me to pick one tonight I don't know what I will pick probably the I don't know. I have to think. But the okay. the, the dwelling pistols was uh, uh, very interesting for me when I first tasted it. I think it was uh, when Alma team had uh, smart drinks of Bucharest, and you guys were there, and yeah. I, I I was like Federalism Fandel forever, and then I I said oh, a blend. Ooh, very nice. Yeah, definitely a, a mid kind of uh, wine. So I will not pair it with uh, anything else than uh, maybe a steak or um, a burger or something very heavy, you know, like yeah. winter, like winter food. I agree. And when I was, when, you know, I've been now at some, I've been going to Romania now for a few years and every time it's Mark drinks um, the dueling pistols. And I think the packaging has to do a lot to do with it, but also the, the quality of the juice. I, I poured probably more dueling pistols at smart drinks than any other than any other wine. People just people just love that that wine. It's been a very good seller there. And then a little a quick very quick little backstory. So there's two dueling pistols there, um, and Alexander Hamilton, a founding father, was killed in a duel 
by a political rival, um, Aaron Burr, um, with those dueling pistols. So again, you know, there's 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 just a lot of stories, um, you know, going on on around here. And I guess if you want to get creative, you know, you can make something up. Um, but that's 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 the story behind the uh, behind this label, the dueling pistols. Show us the new one. <laughs> Show you okay. So I have one of the two bottles here. So what we've done is um, dueling pistols. Um, we've discontinued Federalist dueling pistols. And Dueling Pistols is now a standalone uh, brand. There's no, there's no longer the association duel with Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr. So what we have here is we have two blends. This one here, I'll show you sneak preview. Um, yes. How, how, do I get, how do I get it on the thing here? This is a blend again, Dry Creek Valley, just like the other wine you just tasted. This is Infidel Sarah 50/50. And you have two guys here in Hangtown, California in the, eight, in the 1830s, say, leading up to the gold rush. Um, and Edward and Eli here are going to have a duel over a woman, basically. But to get the whole story, you have to listen to the podcast. And the podcast is just simply Dueling Pistols Wines. There's only 10 episodes, and it's an amazing story. So just like, just like in the Old West, in the Old Frontier, in the old days of California, you're going to have a duel with these dueling pistols here. And then you spin the label around, it's quite innovative. And it's just a three, it's like 360 degrees. And you have the seven town witnesses on the back label to okay. this, to this, to this, uh, to this duel. Um, and not only do you have a duel going on it, on the outside of the bottle, but you have a duel be inside the bottle. You have a duel going on between the two great varieties, the Sierra and the Zinfandel. Which one are you gonna get more of? And so this is guns. This is guns drawn. Hold on, I'm having trouble here. This is guns drawn. Uh, sorry, yeah, guns guns drawn. And the other one is guns aimed. And that's a blend from Paso Robles of Cabernet Sauvignon and Petite Syrah. Um, the, uh, the 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 juice that goes in here, the quality is a step up than the Federalist dueling pistols because the Zinfandel vines are at least 50 years old. So. Um, and it's just, it's an amazing wine. It just takes it to another level. And again, just like the Federalist, you know, it's all about the story. Well, besides the great wine, it's all about the storytelling. And this, this, this wine really captures your, your, your attention and imagination. It does. It, it really does. And you can just, you know, talk like half an hour only about this wine and only about duels and things that uh, were happening back there then. But you said podcast and I was want I wanted to ask you about your podcast because oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> because at the end of your interview, we just put the link to your podcast and people can can uh, oh. hear you. Yes, can hear you talking about your favorite uh, stories from uh, uh, California. So tell us a bit more about uh, your podcast. Okay, so uh, very quickly during, uh, you know, I've been, you know, I've been working throughout lockdown trying to sell wine, which has been very, very challenging. Then I thought, well, what else can I do? And I decided to, I did a lot of research and there's a lot of wine po podcasts in the US. There's very few wine podcasts in the United Kingdom, but there are, there are a few people who have been doing it now for a few years. Um, and I thought, well, how can I go about, you know, to promote, you know, the wines, the, the wines that I work with, how can I, you know, help promote these wines that, you know, that the Chilato family's, um, uh, making. And so I, I developed a podcast and it's, it's about California. It's about California. It's aspirational lifestyle. And it's about its wines. Cause you, you think California, you think Hollywood, you think beaches, you think Disneyland, you think skiing, you think wine regions. And people want to go. When you talk California, you sell the lifestyle and people want to go there. So I thought, well, how could I bring California, um, you know, to the people that I work with, not only in the UK, but Europe, US. Um, and so it's called On the Road with Chuck Kramer. And I talk about, I try and, and I try and tell stories about me growing up in California, uh, places to do, places to visit. But I always talk about a wine region. I always talk about one of our wines. I throw some fun facts in there and it's just been, it's been, a, it's been a lot of fun. Look at, I think episode 11 just, just came out this morning. Um, and, uh, I'm just going to carry on. It's a weekly podcast and I, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I mean, you know, 
it's it's new to me. You know, you're a much better interviewer than I am, and I'm just I'm just <laughs> learning. I'm just learning along the way. So it's been it's been great. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, Alex is Hello. coming. So. Tana, <laughs> I'm, I'm the side of the. As you see, Chuck, uh, because it, uh, I think it's so funny. Uh, in every live we do, Marina has the nice office in the living room, and I'm uh, stuck in the kitchen. So uh, we have a hard life, and uh, we thus we require a, a very good wine. Yes. No. So. Uh, and I have so all the wines with me, so I just pour him a small quantity in the glasses <laughs> and I have the bottles here also. Exactly, and now you even change the order. So actually, guys, I want to congratulate you because listening to you, I uh, identified every wine. So, <laughs> <laughs> of course, except Dwelling Crystals, which I knew, and of course, uh, the Rutherford Hill, which was the only white. I mean, how, how stupid can I be, yeah? So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Jack, you're right. It was a it was a bet uh, that you you could not win uh, because first of all, I, I'm not a fan of whites. I'm a I'm a red blooded uh, red meat uh, red wine kind of guy. Yeah. So Mar Marina tricked me, but that's fine. I I don't mind. I don't but, mind. But she fell into her own trap because I told you in the private chat, except dwelling pistols, because that would be the obvious choice. It would be too easy. And she chose the, the uh, honest blend, uh, and it was not that. It was not that because uh, in the, in the these four wines, of course, the white was uh, best suited for the temperatures we have. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think uh, that wine it's it's a, a little bit too heavy to drink uh, in the warm days we have here. We have okay. 40 plus uh, uh, degrees even now, I think. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, actually, my choice for this evening would be Federalist, the the Lodi. The Zinfandel. Okay, yeah, it's, I love that wine. It's a great wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah because it, it took me back when I when I first fell in love with uh, with uh, Zinfandel. It was due to to the Federalist Lodi. Mm -hmm. So uh, then I switched to Dwelling Pistols, but Dwelling Pistols is a bit more hardcore uh, for for for. Uh, uh, for this kind of uh, this kind weather, of weather, yeah, yeah, and weather. So for me, actually, you both uh, both uh, win actually due to this tasting. But uh, the bet is uh, is lost for both of you. I win. I take all the bottles, Marina. Okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, not too bad early. I have uh, I have work to do. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much, Jack. It was even a joke in the comments, but I didn't I didn't post it because it was too long and it was too in Romania. And uh, the joke was. Uh, so this dude's name is uh, Kramer. Uh, so <laughs> how the interview would have went uh, because in Romania we say Kramo, yeah, to white. Okay. So oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I follow them. I follow them on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, what, that's what, great. What, what's your name, Chuck Kramer? Okay, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> Good. If I need a job, I'll move to Bucharest tomorrow. That's fine. <laughs> you're welcome. We expect you when you come here to also to call us. And well, maybe, have, maybe have a private glass of wine, and maybe invite a few of our uh, our uh, clients and uh, customers, and, and do something really nice. Well, well, yeah. Whether George has smart drinks or not, I know it's going to be challenging in October. But I told yeah. him I want to I want to come out and and I want to come out this year and help sell. So it'd be great to see you guys. It would be our pleasure. Maybe organize a, a evening out or something, and we definitely. And just just have a few laughs because actually I was quite a bit surprised because uh, I think you have a, a bit of screen track, you know, because when I met you and when you talked to me about wines, you are you are I don't know in the same time hugging me and the wines, and now you were a bit uh, too too focused uh, on on the technical part. <laughs> well, yeah, that's well. That well, that's the thing is. I mean, I guess with Zoom or whatever these these chats, uh, we we can you know we can get in each other's you know living rooms, bathrooms, kitchens, yeah. or or whatever. But I do miss. I, I I love to talk about these wines, and I don't think about it as as I don't I don't look at it as selling. I just love talking about the wines because if the wines are good, the wine should sell themselves. Okay, I mean, with me, you get the you with me, you get the California accent. I guess that's maybe one. One one benefit, but I do miss being in market. I do miss being there and you know physically talking to you guys and seeing you guys and having a good laugh. 
um, and having some fun. And, you know, that's what it's all about, you know, and it, it just creates, it's, you know, this COVID world that we live in right now. I don't like it. I don't like it a whole lot. I want to go back to what the way things were, where, you know, we're, we're all together in one room under, you know, under one roof. Yeah, 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 we all do that. We all do miss those those times, but no, so maybe maybe I think I have I have this uh, I have Chuck on this high pedestal, you know, <laughs> because every time I met him during a wine fair or something, he was always pouring in my glass. He was like, "Go <laughs> on, and you should," and then started talking about it, and it was so so passionate and so so uh, energetic that it made you feel good. I mean, it's, well, it's thank my, you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I look forward to coming. I look forward to coming back. And um, if I go into if I go into your Facebook page, um, I can just I can just tell people to like go to your Facebook page and they can watch this. Yes. Yeah. Also, yeah. YouTube right. channel, Facebook page, uh, Despravin uh, So it's it's going to be everywhere. Your your interview. It's going to be on the website as well. Okay. Wow. Well, thanks for making me famous. I appreciate that. <laughs> It's our job, right? I, as I told you, we, we make you look good so you can yeah. make life look good. Yeah, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't have yeah. to wear any makeup today because the camera is so far away, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to know even if you wear pants or not. I mean, you can keep, keep <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not standing up, Alex. I'm not going to stand up. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Jack. It was very nice having you. Uh, you, you guys were great. Uh, and... Uh, what can I say? Hope to see you soon, live, and hope to pinch in a glass. Yeah, I think I'll I think I'll see you guys this year for sure. Marina, Alex, thank you very much. It was a lot of fun. I really appreciate it, and thank you for the support. I really appreciate the support. We also appreciate the cooperation. Yeah. All right, guys. So ending live broadcast.